Hello, students, and welcome to another edition of Mr. Sandwich Reads, and I am Mr. Sandwich. Today, I'm reading Chapter 13 of Jerry Spinelli's Stargirl. In less than a minute, everything returned to normal. Stargirl retrieved Cinnamon and sat back coolly in the hot seat as if nothing had happened. Kevin's eyes twinkled. He was squirming. He couldn't wait to dig into the interview. Neither could the jury, but their eyes were not twinkling. Kevin forced himself to look serious. So, your name, Stargirl. It's pretty unusual. Stargirl gave him a blank look. Kevin was flustered. Isn't it? He said. Stargirl shrugged. Not to me. She's putting him on, I thought. Chico, I said into my mic. Stay tight on her face. A voice was heard dimly off camera. Kevin turned. A jury member had spoken. Jury, mic up, I said. Ready? Two. The mic was passed to Jennifer St. John. Two. The mic looked like a black ice cream cone before Jennifer's face. Her voice wasn't pleasant. What was wrong with the name your parents gave you? Stargirl turned slowly to Jennifer. She smiled. Nothing. It was a good name. What was it? Susan. So why did you drop it? Because I didn't feel like Susan anymore. So you just threw out Susan and named yourself Stargirl? No. Still smiling? No. Pocket Mouse. Twelve pairs of eyes boggled. What? I named myself Pocket Mouse, Stargirl said breezily. Then Mud Pie, then Holy Goly, then Stargirl. Damon Ritchie snatched the mic from Jennifer St. John. So what's, what's it going to be next? Dog turd? Uh-oh, I thought. Here we go. Kevin jumped in. So you change your name you change your name whenever you get tired of it? Whenever it doesn't fit anymore. I'm not my name. My name is something I wear, like a shirt. It gets worn. I outgrow it. I change it. So why Stargirl? Oh, I don't know. She petted Cinnamon's nose with her fingertip. I was walking in the desert one night, looking up in the sky, like she chuckled. How can you not look at the sky? And it just sort of came to me fell on to me. Kevin looked up from his sheet, sheet of prepared questions. So what do your parents think? Are they sad you didn't keep Susan? No, it was almost their idea. When I started calling myself Pocket Mouse when I was little, they called me that too. And we just never went back. Another distant voice from the jury. I tapped the sound man. Jury Mike, and keep all mics open. I hated to do, the, do it. <laughs> So now the jury can chime in whenever the mics are on. It was Mike Ebersol. I said, do you love your country? Yes, she answered briskly. Do you love yours? Ebersol ignored her question. Why don't you say the Pledge of Allegiance right? She smiled. Sounds right to me. Sounds like you're a traitor to me. Jurors were only supposed to ask questions, not make statements. A hand reached into the picture and grabbed the mic from Ebersol. Becca Rinaldi's angry face appeared on camera, too. Why do you cheer for the other team? Stargirl seemed to be thinking it over. I guess because I'm a cheerleader. You're not just a cheerleader, you dumb cluck. Becky Rinaldi was snarling into the mic. You're supposed to be our cheerleader, a Micah cheerleader? I glanced at Mr. Robinow. He was turned away from the monitors. He was staring straight at the set through the control room window. So I don't know, maybe he's, he's just mentally somewhere else. It doesn't seem like Mr. Rubinow is keeping the order the way uh, the adult supervisor should. Stargirl was leaning forward, looking earnestly at Becca Rinaldi, her voice small as a little girl's. When the other team scores a point and you see how happy it makes all their fans, doesn't it make you happy too? Becca growled. No. Doesn't it make you want to join in? No. Don't you ever want the other team to be happy too? No. Stargirl seemed genuinely surprised. You don't always want to be the winner, do you? Becca scowled at her, jutted out her jaw. Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I always want to be the winner. That's what I do. I root for us to win. That's what we all do. She swept her arm around the set. We root for Micah. She jabbed her finger at the stage. Who do you root for? Stargirl hesitated. She smiled. She threw out her arms. I root for everybody. Kevin, to the rescue, thankfully, clapped his hands. 
hey, how about this? Maybe it should be official. Maybe one person in the whole district should be appointed to be on. He waved his arm. Everybody's side. Stargirl reached over and slapped Kevin's knee. She could wear every school letter on her sweater. Kevin laughed. She'd have to be big as a house. Stargirl slapped her own knee. Then no letter at all. That's even better. She looked in the camera. She swiped at the space before her. Out with letters. Cheerleader at large. Everybody's cheerleader. Kevin sat at attention, placed his hand over his heart with liberty and justice and a cheerleader for all. Ebersol snarled into the jury mic. And a nut roll for all. Kevin wagged his finger. That's a no-no, he scowled. He scolded, excuse me. Scolded means like reprimand or... Uh, um, yeah. Uh, no statement from the jury. Question, no statements from the jury. Questions only, Kevin says. Uh, Renee Bozeman snatched the mic. Okay, here's a question. Why did you quit homeschooling? Star's girl, Star Girl's face became serious. I wanted to make friends. Well, you sure have a funny way of showing it. Maybe the whole school, may, making the whole school mad at you. I wished I had never given in to hot seating Stargirl. Stargirl just stared. Chico filled the screen with her face. Gimme, it was Jennifer St. John, reaching for the mic. And out of school too, you meddle into everybody's business. You stick your nose in, whether you're invited or not. Why do you do that? Stargirl had no reply. Her usual impish, impish expression was gone. She looked at Jennifer. She looked at the camera, as if trying to find an answer in the lens. Then she was looking away, looking at the control room. I took my eyes from the monitor, and for a second, I thought they met hers at the control room window. I had been wondering when Hillary Kimball would speak up. Now she did. I'm going to tell you something, girl. You're goofy. You're crazy. Hillary was standing, jabbing her finger at Stargirl, chewing on the mic. You must have come from Mars or something. Kevin raised a timid hand. And don't tell me no statements, Kevin. Why'd you come from? Where'd you come from? Mars or something? There, now it's a question. Why don't you go back to where you came from? There's another question. Stargirl's eyes filled the camera. Don't cry, I prayed. There was no stopping Hillary. You want to cheer for other schools? Fine, go there. Don't come to my school. Get out of my school. Other hands were snatching at the mic. You know what your problem is? All this weird stuff you do? It's just to get attention. It's to get a boyfriend. The jurors, la jurors laughed. They were a mob. Hands grabbed at the mic. Kevin looked anxiously at me. I could do nothing. With all the buttons and switches at my command, I was helpless to change anything on the other side of the glass. I got a simple question for you. What's the matter with you, huh? Huh? Why can't you be normal? Why do you want to be so different? Yeah, is something wrong with us? You got to be so different. Why don't you wear makeup? They were all standing now, jabbing, jutting, shouting, whether they had the mic or not. Why don't you, you don't like us, do you? Do you? Mr. Robinow flipped the master toggle on the council. That's it, he said. I flipped the studio sound switch. That's it. Show's over. The jury went on shouting. Okay, so in this chapter, we've sort of seen the rise. Well, in recent chapters, we've seen sort of the rise and fall of Stargirl. Um... I had mentioned early on the themes of individuality versus conformity, um, conformity or, or conforming being um, taking on different uh, traits or behaviors or actions, um, attributes uh, to fit in with a larger group. And we see that come to uh, um, we see that kind of uh, reach its peak here in this chapter as the conformed group, the mob here has turned on Stargirl and her uh, her unique ways, her individuality, um, because she's not rooting for the home team. So we also, I would add to this, to the themes of competition, uh, nationalism, when we sort of create an identity, uh, like a tribal identity, um, or tribalism might also be a theme or subject. Um, are people naturally uh, pack animals? Do we naturally like to be in clusters? Um, and are we threatened by other groups? Um, so anyways, this reminds me too of a special I once saw about um, howler monkeys, how their howls are actually a way to indicate that that, this, that circle of the woods or whatever, where, not the woods, but the forest belongs to them. And um, it lets like other surrounding groups know, don't come, don't come close. So 
do humans naturally have that uh, in them? Are we better for that? Should we be uh, sort of evolved past that? Um, so some things to think about, conformity versus individuality. And um, I don't know, what do you think? Is Stargirl in the wrong to be rooting for every team? Um, is it natural inclination to, to root for your own, your own group? Um, or should we all be a little bit more like Stargirl and um, less competitive? All right. Anyways, I do really enjoy Jerry Spinelli Stargirl. I hope you do too. Keep following along. I'll have chapter 14 posted shortly as well. All right. Peace.